We have seen in the subsequent forecasts starting from 2000, 2003, 2006, 2009, 12, 15, we have seen that Chinese commitment to African countries in terms of foreign direct investment, development assistance, and also trade increased from time to time significantly. It is important to consider that this infrastructure must be sustainable, which means it must into consider the effect on environment uh, and climate changes. As uh, uh, China and also most African countries, you know, uh, signed the Paris Agreement. Because, for example, we can cite Ethiopia as a, a good example: the, the Hawassa Industrial Park, which is the largest and modern uh, in Africa. Ethiopia, in general, uh, made a, you know an assessment and a research on Chinese sp uh, industrial parks, and uh, this park is very much, uh, pretty much, environment friendly. So, African countries must take this important lesson. The other thing is uh, African countries also must promote for value addition and the beneficiation of their um, raw materials, including, you know, mining, products from mining and, uh, you know, for timber, anything which we need to stop exporting uh, raw materials. We need to encourage China and other partners to help us to process it from within, because unless we process it, uh, the the value uh, the value addition will be very low the cost will be you know the market price will be very low it, it doesn't benefit us rather in the upcoming focac i would suggest african countries to negotiate for value addition of their materials from within rather than exporting the timber exporting uh, the minings you know the and the other products uh, focac also bring together our peoples people from China and people from Africa uh, because uh, this development should be actually uh, a human-centered uh, development if we want to talk about sustainability.